From the time I was very young, I was influenced by my family to believe in the existence of God. Every week, I would go to church with my parents and listen to God's teachings. My parents taught me to respect my elders. They also taught me to help those who are in trouble. I have never touched illegal drugs because I understand the dangers of drugs to one's physical and mental health as well as to society. I know that as a Christian, I have a responsibility to protect myself and others from harm. When I was 19 years old, I tried alcohol, but I soon realized it wasn't for me. I was repulsed by the taste. I also understood that alcohol was potentially harmful to the human body. As a result, I decided to give up drinking to keep myself sober and healthy. My greatest hobby is fishing and hunting with friends. When I was 20 years old, I got my first job as an apprentice in an auto repair shop. This job was both an opportunity and a challenge for me. While saving the money I earned, I worked hard to learn auto repair skills and continue to improve my professionalism. From simple maintenance to complex engine troubleshooting, I tried to do my best. I dream of owning my own auto repair shop one day. Although this job is very hard, I know it is the only way to realize my dream. I had to rely on my own efforts to change my fate. After four years of hard work, I finally realized my dream. With the support of my friends, we opened a garage together. This was an important moment in my life and I felt proud and satisfied. On July 3, 2004, I worked late in the store that day. Due to financial constraints, I could not afford an electric lift, so we often worked with a hydraulic jack. Working with a hydraulic jack can be a relatively laborious and time-consuming task. While I was checking the car chassis, an accident happened. The hydraulic jack suddenly deflected and the car's chassis pressed against my chest. I instantly felt severe pain, breathing became extremely difficult. I struggled hard. But could not move my body. I could only call for help in the pain. Due to the lack of oxygen and severe pain, the sound I made was very faint. At that moment, I was in a state of panic and helplessness. I could only lie there in pain. Time seemed to become a blur, and I could not determine how long I had been lying there. Slowly, I drifted off to sleep. When I awoke, a sharp pain in my chest reawakened me. I realized that I was not free from my predicament. This repeated torture made me feel desperate. As time passed, I stopped feeling the pain. Suddenly, I was floating above the car. I looked down and found my body lying there, as if it had stopped breathing. Just then, a spinning black hole appeared around me, drawing my attention. It radiated a mysterious power, and I approached the portal curiously. The moment I stepped into the portal, a powerful force surrounded me. I felt myself moving at lightning speed. The portal was translucent, and I could see clearly what was outside. I saw myself leaving the Earth's atmosphere and my body moving fast through the galaxy. The stars were shining beautifully. I felt a sense of infinite freedom that was so intense. I have heard many people say that a light appears at the end of the tunnel. I can now tell you responsibly that it is true. When I entered that light, I was pushed out by a force. I instantly arrived at a peaceful and beautiful meadow. This meadow was filled with green grass, and a gentle breeze blew against them. This meadow was filled with all kinds of flowers, each emitting a charming fragrance. As I continued to walk along the meadow, I felt a sense of peace and harmony. I noticed that the flowers here were in many colors I had never seen before, and they bloomed with a glorious light, as beautiful as a rainbow. After a while, I came to a clear stream. 
A small wooden bridge spanned over the stream. When I crossed the bridge, I saw a house. The house was surrounded by a garden. A man approached me. As he drew closer, I was surprised to find that he looked almost identical to me. My mind was filled with confusion and I couldn't help but ask, why do you look like me? I was full of doubts. He smiled and replied, I am your twin brother. This answer confused me even more, because I had never heard that I had a twin brother. I replied firmly, I don't have a twin brother. He laughed and gently explained that I was born very healthy. But he unfortunately died young. I was shocked to hear this news. He invited me to come with him to his home. I felt his warmth and sincerity, so I followed him into the house. When I entered the house, I found it very cozy. There were several beautiful landscape paintings hanging on the wall. The furniture was neatly arranged. I sat with him on the comfortable sofa. We continued to talk and share our experiences with each other. His voice was gentle and infectious, and every word was full of wisdom. He told me about his unique perspective on the world. Together we discussed the meaning of life. He gave me profound insights that helped me better understand and face the challenges in life. In his home, I gradually came to understand the true meaning of life. He invited me to go for a walk in the garden with him. After walking for some time, a building appeared in the distance. It emitted a dazzling light. It seemed to be suspended in the air and gave off a mysterious atmosphere. I asked what was inside that building. He smiled and replied, that is where God often appears. This building is a sanctuary to connect with God. There, people can have spiritual dialogue and communication with God and seek wisdom and guidance. I was very surprised to hear this answer. Now God was actually so close to me. We moved toward the building, each step accompanied by an inner excitement. As we got closer, the building glowed brighter and brighter. It seemed to be constructed of pure white marble, and the entire building shone brightly in the sunlight. The shape of the building presented an elegant and stately design. It has streamlined curves and exquisite carvings. The main entrance of the building has two huge pillars with intricate and exquisite carvings in relief. The door is inlaid with precious stones. As we entered the doors of that building, my soul was baptized. At that very moment, an angel appeared before us. The angel was tall and majestic in size. Her wings seemed to be woven of pure light. Each feather shone with a silvery glow. The angel wore a long, white robe that fluttered gently. Her face is gentle and serene. Her presence emanated a divine aura, and the air around her seemed to become fresh and pure. The angel's voice was soft and warm. She told me that it was time to go back to my original life. To bring the knowledge I had learned back into the real world. Although I did not want to leave here, I understood that I had to go back now. With the guidance of the angels, I left the building. After I said goodbye to them, I went back into the portal and a powerful force pulled me forward. I traveled across the galaxy and back to Earth. The speed was like lightning. In an instant, I was back at the repair shop. The sun shone through the window on the floor warm and bright. I knew that it was already the next morning. Suddenly, I heard someone open the door. I knew that I had to go back into my body and reconnect with the real world. I tried to lie down next to my body, but nothing worked. I felt confused and frustrated and didn't know how to go back. Just then, I heard a voice, as if it were a guide from deep within. 
It gently told me to enter through my head. I focused my mind and prepared to try again. My consciousness and body began to gradually merge and I could feel a warm energy flowing through me. When I opened my eyes again, I found that I had managed to get back into my body. I felt my breath and heard the beating of my heart. I realized that I had returned to the real world. I began to cry out for help, hoping to get my friend's attention. He was very worried about me and immediately called the emergency number of the fire department. Firefighters quickly arrived on the scene. The firefighters quickly launched a rescue operation, using specialized equipment to free me from my predicament. I was successfully pulled out of harm's way. I looked gratefully at the rescuers and expressed my gratitude to them. I was taken to the hospital for further examination and treatment. The doctors were surprised at my condition. I did not have broken ribs. Only extensive bruises and abrasions. To make sure I had no other potential injuries, the doctors decided to keep me in the hospital for two days for observation. After two days of observation, the doctors confirmed that I was in good health and did not experience any discomfort or complications. On the third day, I walked out of the hospital. Although my body was still a little tired, I felt very happy. This experience made me understand how fragile and precious life is. I returned home with great excitement, and the first person I wanted to see was my mother. My mother's face lit up with happiness and joy. She quickly walked towards me and hugged me tightly. After dinner, we sat together in a warm and cordial atmosphere. There was some concern inside me, and I didn't know how to mention to her about my injury experience, because I didn't want to worry her. I gently asked my mother if I had a twin brother. My mother's expression instantly became complicated and her eyes became moist. She began to weep incessantly. My mother grabbed my hand, and her voice trembled a little. She told me that I did have a twin brother, but he passed away shortly after birth. She never told me this fact to protect me so that I could grow up happy. I was shocked to hear this news. I stroked my mother's hand and whispered to comfort her, telling her she didn't have to hide the secret anymore. I loved her deeply and appreciated everything she had done for me. Later, I shared my experience with a few friends. Most of them were happy for me when they heard it. We discussed about the possibility of the supernatural. However, one friend approached my experience with skepticism. He told me that it was just a hallucination I was having. He tried to explain my experience with science. Despite the skepticism, I tried to remain calm and rational. I know that everyone has their own beliefs and opinions. My experience is difficult for them to accept. I respect their opinions. But I also hold fast to my own beliefs. I don't need everyone to believe in my experiences, it's important that I know they are true for myself. My experiences have changed my perception of life. I decided to keep this experience within myself and use it to inspire and remind myself. Everyone has their own beliefs and opinions, and we can respect and understand each other.